You're going to go back into the gym and you'll actually probably find that you can't even lift as heavy as what you did the day before. Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video I'm going to be talking about some different things that help in terms of muscle growth, things that have been proven to help build muscle by science. Let's get on with the video. So first thing then is time under tension. Now time under tension is pretty self-explanatory. It is basically the amount of time that the muscle is under tension. So say for example you're doing like a bicep curl, obviously the downward movement is also tension and the upward movement is also tension. So I know a lot of people tend to go off like sets and reps but it could actually be more productive for you to go off time under tension. Now you can incorporate this by obviously making sure that you really are emphasizing every single movement. Um, I know a lot of people tend to do, say for example a bicep curl again, a lot of people tend to go down and then then they'll go slowly up and then down and then slowly up because you know it's just natural instinct like you, gravity pulls you down so you're just like Bleh. whereas realistically you can actually make this part of the movement really really helpful towards your muscle gains um you are technically wasting about 50 percent of the exercise by doing this because if you were to actually actively hold the weight or the resistance on the way down you are making the muscles still work and stretch and this is hugely hugely important for muscle growth so the next thing then is recovery so recovery is so 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 important because it is the one thing while you're in the gym that you can actually do in order to make sure that your next set it has like the maximum impact if you're not resting between sets you're going into the next set without maximum energy in your system so we have these molecules in our body called atp or adenosine triphosphate and basically these are released as energy so when you're doing like an explosive movement these are the readily available particles of energy that you will use up in order to actually complete the movement. So if we rest, this allows our body to have more time to actually reproduce these energy molecules and to actually have them actively ready. So when you go in for your next set, you have a full restoration of energy. And that is why rest is so, so important. I know I never used to rest between sets. So I just thought I was doing great because, you know, fuck it, who needs to rest? But I was just literally going set after set after set after set and like killing myself off. So I was never at like the maximum amount of energy because I wasn't allowing my body to recuperate from the previous set that I'd just done. Now this also applies outside of the gym because once you've done a session, if you go into the gym the next day and do that same session again, using the same body parts or whatever, you've not given your body enough time to actually recover and rejuvenate itself in preparation to actually lift again. And obviously when you go into the gym, you're breaking down the muscle fibers. So this in turn obviously makes the muscle weaker temporarily while it rebuilds itself and basically prepares itself for lifting that heavy load again or even heavier. So if you're not actually giving it time to rest and rebuild those muscle fibers you're going to go back into the gym and you'll actually probably find that you can't even lift as heavy as what you did the day before and you'll be thinking oh my god i'm losing muscle gains because i can't lift the 40 kilograms that i lifted yesterday when realistically you've just not given your body enough time to actually rebuild the muscle fibers back to its maximum strength and then once you've given it that chance to actually rebuild then you'll go back into the gym and you'll be able to lift heavier than you did previously and that is the whole point of rest and recovery because it's so so important we yes we go in the gym and we you know we supposedly build muscle but the way i see it is we go into the gym and we break down the muscle it's when you leave and what you eat and how you rest that is so so important in actually rebuilding the muscle for it to actually be better um, and your time in the gym to actually be effective so my third one that is very similar to the time under tension tip but this is about the eccentric phase of a movement as i was saying you are essentially wasting 50 percent of an exercise if you don't focus on the downward movement movement of an exercise. Say for example you're doing squats. Going down in a squat is so so important to do it slow and steady because this is what engages the glutes, engages the quads into the actual movement and like I said again time under tension plays a huge role in this because the more time that it has under tension the better the muscle growth is going to be um, from the actual exercise so the eccentric phase is so important there is studies I have mentioned this before in I think it was my last video if you haven't seen that go check it out obviously the research is a little bit wobbly in terms of like what's better what works better for muscle growth and all that because there's all different kinds of 
theories and studies that can be altered in order to obviously meet a person's desires for the study. Um, however, some studies have actually shown that the eccentric phase of a movement is more important than the concentric phase of the movement um, in terms of actual muscle growth. So this to me just screams like we should be paying more attention to the eccentric phase as well as we do the concentric phase. It is so, so, so important and regardless of what the studies say, whether it's better, whether it's worse, I think both sides of a movement are so important and you should consider both of them just as much as the other. I'm not saying at all throughout this video that you know everything that I say is going to help everybody. That's definitely not the case. Um, muscle growth and muscle building is super difficult and it is different for everyone. Everybody's body works completely different and responds completely different to a different style of training. But in terms of my own personal history in like what I've learnt and obviously scientific studies, what they say, these things are so, so important. All right, so tip number four then is to actually train every muscle group at least two times a week. Now, it is shown that minimal muscle growth will occur if you only train each muscle group once a week. Um, and this is kind of a given, like it's very slack to only train your muscle groups like once a week. Um, and it should kind of come as common sense really, I suppose that nothing is really gonna be you know, happening majorly if you're only training once a week. So I recommend twice a week at the very minimum. I believe that, you know, you can train as much as you want, to be honest, as long as you're obviously not overtraining, as long as you're not really, really like doing the same muscle groups over and over again. I used to be that girl that was always training glutes and legs literally every single day. So if you're wanting to grow your biceps, then maybe do that three times a week. If you want like a specific body part to actually like be bigger than the rest or if you want one to be more developed or if your focus is on one more than another then obviously put that one first and do that one more than the rest um, but I would say try and make a split that obviously includes or incorporates all the different muscle groups at least twice a week I do actually have a video up on how to create your own training program um, quite simply as well it is a beginner's guide so if you want to go check that out I will try and leave it up there or up there wherever that might be <laughs> um, I'll put it up there for you the last tip that I have is is to do the hardest exercise first. Now, this is something that I used to make the mistake of doing. I would just use whatever was available. And I mean, obviously in some circumstances, you are gonna have to just use whatever equipment is available. Whatever equipment? Whatever equipment is available. <laughs> um, obviously when you get to the gym, sometimes it might be very busy or whatever, but I've kind of figured out like my time to go to the gym now when it is the least busy and you know, when I can access the equipment that I do need for each day. So say for example, it's a leg day, I will get to the gym as soon as it opens rather than leaving it until later on in the day because I only have three squat racks at my gym and it's basically like survival of the fittest to get to the squat racks. So I basically go as early as I can, jump on one straight away. Um, and obviously squats are a massive compound movement. So I tend to do those first. Um, I also do my heavy hip thrust second or first, depending on how I'm feeling. Um, or if like, the squat racks were available. But I always try to do the heaviest movements first. Like, trying to just get on the equipment whatever you can at any time. It can be kind of detrimental to your training just because of the fact that if you're wearing yourself out doing isolation movements, for example, on a leg day, um, if you're over on the cable machine for half an hour and then you're doing, I don't know, hamstring curls and goblet squats, I don't know, anything that is a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to do, then later on you're gonna be absolutely exhausted and then you're gonna to have to go and do your hip thrusts and go and do your squats and go and do your deadlifts and that's when your energy is gonna be lowest. Like when you're starting to get hungry, you know, your, your workout's nearly over, like you're ready to go home basically. And that can really cause issues because you're not gonna be lifting as heavy as what you can for one. Um, and you're also, you could injure yourself because if you aren't putting in as much effort and your form is not as great because you're tired, you could end up really hurting yourself somewhere. So I do definitely recommend that you do, obviously do the heaviest exercises first um, and then do the lighter isolations a little bit later on or easier exercises, doesn't have to be isolations, um, just the easier exercises later on. Same with cardio. Um, I would always recommend to do your weight training before doing cardio, not because it has any impact on your muscle or anything like that, but just simply because of the fact that cardio tires you out a lot more than what weight training would. Obviously weight training is explosive yes it is tiring I'm not saying it's not 
but cardio literally uses energy constantly. Like you are burning calories constant, constant, constant. Your heart is racing and pumping all the blood to your muscles constantly. Whereas obviously weight training, you have rest, you recover a little bit and then you go again. Um, so weight training obviously takes a little bit less energy out of you. So I'd definitely say to do your heavy lifting first because obviously you're gonna need the maximum energy to lift the maximum weight. Um, and then go into your cardio afterwards. That's how I do it, that's just my personal preference. If it's different for you, if you've seen a completely different study that says, do cardio first, do cardio first. I'm not telling you not to, I'm just saying I recommend not to do your cardio first because it is tiring guys, tiring. So they are all my tips then guys in terms of muscle growth and different things that you can be trying out in order to get the maximum muscle growth. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you don't already follow me on some social medias, I'll leave my Instagram on the screen for you and I will put my Instagram, Twitter in the description box below as well. Make sure that you go back and check out some more of my videos. I would really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.